Good evening, I'm Lori Tucker. Tonight, a community is in mourning following the deadly attacks in Chattanooga, and we are remembering the four Marines killed. Gunnery Sergeant Thomas Sullivan from Massachusetts, who earned two Purple Hearts serving in Iraq. 21-year-old Skip Wells from Marietta, Georgia. Staff Sergeant David Wyatt from North Carolina, who served in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And Sergeant Carson Holmquist of Wisconsin. He too had served in Afghanistan. We have a WATE 6 on your side team in Chattanooga keeping us informed on the latest in this tragedy. Let's go now to the scene of the first shooting on Lee Highway where 6 News anchor Kristen Farley has been spending a lot of time today. Kristen, this scene was very active when I was there last night. What's it like there tonight? Very active once again, Lori. In fact, we have seen a constant stream of cars going in and out. This might be the slowest it has been all evening long, but I would say this has grown, this memorial here, at least tenfold since 1 o'clock this afternoon. One of the things we are seeing now, a chaplain walking up and down, making sure that if anyone needs any extra assistance, that he is here to help them. Also, we are now beginning to see mementos left behind that are specific to the victims of the shooting. Those four Marines' names now showing up on many things here. In fact, we even saw a purple heart left behind earlier today. So um, obviously this memorial growing both in size as well as in meaning for so many people all throughout the Chattanooga community. And of course, so many people wanting to find a way to express their concerns and condolences. There was a massive vigil earlier tonight and WATE six on your side reporter Whitney Good was there. She's been spending the day talking to people. You were at that vigil earlier. So uh, what was it like down there? You know, it was really incredible to watch. Hundreds of people came out, and there's just been tons of emotions pouring out all over this community. This vigil was really about learning to heal and move forward with the one strong message that they can do it together. People from all walks of life, races, and religions all coming together united in mourning. The young man lost so much. You know, he gave up so much. You know, and he took so much. He took more than he gave up, and he gave up a lot. Jimmy Coley, a Chattanooga Marine, feels a special place in his heart for the four lives lost. This vigil pushing the message that one man's actions don't define the community. Chattanooga Muslims have come for solidarity to mourn our fallen heroes. It's really hard to make sense of what happened. So it was just important that we be amongst our friends and the whole Chattanooga community. It, it, it might make us make some sense out of this. State leaders also in attendance, taken over by emotion as everyone tries to make sense of this crime. We mourn four Marines. Praying that they can all move forward together. Chattanooga strong for those now struggling with the loss of loved ones. The United States Marine Corps has a motto. That motto is also a promise. A promise in the tradition of today's demonstration of faith to Semper Fi. All right, that was our team there in Chattanooga. Just so powerful to, to see that service today. And everyone asking Whitney to pass along that we all keep those Marines and their loved ones in our thoughts and prayers as they learn to somehow deal with that enormous loss. And now we want to uh, take you to the scene of that second shooting. And Kristen Farley took a look at that area today. It's where the four Marines were gunned down uh, amidst the crime scene tape and police presence was a group of uh, virtually strangers coming together. Let's take a look at that. For the first time, we travel to the scene of the second shooting, the place where the four Marines were gunned down. Amidst the crime scene tape and police presence, we found this group, virtually all strangers coming together in a moment of silence, all because of a Facebook post. I posted on Facebook and it got shared and I told him to meet me at the Northgate Mall at five o'clock and I waited there about four and people just started pouring in. 20 year old Thomas Wilson was in the army. He says part of his family was taken away from him yesterday and he was visibly moved to meet this Marine here tonight. It's very heartbreaking. It's his brothers as mine. It's not just people that we know that we served with. We're brothers. We share a special bond. 
He, like so many others, are struggling with what happened Thursday in his own backyard. But his rolling memorial, seen all throughout town, is reminding him what it truly means to be Chattanooga strong. It's great. Nobody had to come do this. Nobody had to show attention, but it just shows how much these people mean to us. Not just these people, but everybody. There's a lot of hate in this world, and these people lost, these people lost their lives because of hate. And us coming together to show love means a lot. They might be gone because of hate, but they're remembered by love. Well, these moments are making a difference. And look at this, the memorial along Lee Highway outside the first shooting location again has grown so much since yesterday. And tonight we spoke with a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps who, like so many, stopped by to pay his respects. Uh, one team, one fight, and this is just like family. Whether we're stationed around the world in Okinawa or you know, overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan or right here in the United States, wherever they're at, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. So it was definitely uh, hurts my heart to see, you know, a brothers in, in arms, you know, go down for something like that. All right, that's what we saw there. We want to go back out to Kristen Farley now, who has heard from a woman who actually says she witnessed the attacks. Kristen. Well, Lori, tonight we are hearing from a woman who says, as you just said, she witnessed these horrific attacks. Sally Breyer says that she has actually uh, been waiting in the parking lot for her stepson who was signing up to join the National Guard. Well, she says she was so close that she had to end her call with her daughter for fear that the gunman would actually hear her. I was talking to my daughter on the phone and the guy drove in. He was driving really slow like it was no big deal. And then, uh, excuse me, when he stopped, I thought, well, he's just here picking somebody up. And that's when I saw him pulling. He, he leaned over into the passenger seat and pulled out the rifle, and I saw the black handle. And then he brought the barrel up, and as he brought the barrel up, he started shooting, and he just went back and forth shooting. And then he dropped the clip and put a new one in and did the same thing, and he went back and forth two times. And then he just pulled off real slow, like it was no big deal until he got here, and then he started tweeting out. Can Sarah talk to me? Frightening eyewitness account there at this very scene where we are standing right now. That is where this woman witnessed that shooting right here along Lee Highway. Again, you see so many people coming out this evening and the chaplain that I was speaking of earlier is out here as well. We also, Lori, had a chance to talk to the Marine that was in the story that you shared just a few moments ago from that other shooting site. He did not want to appear on camera, but came over here this evening and spoke to me for some time. And uh, it was almost therapeutic for him to talk about his colleagues colleagues who had lost their lives. He was actually in that same unit, but was not there at the center when the shooting happened yesterday. Uh, we have much more coverage coming from Chattanooga in just a few minutes for you, but right now let's go ahead and send it back to the studio. Lori.